Uh, okay, it's been about, man, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days to get back from Chattanooga, get recuperated from my triathlon. I did a 12 week prep, did a vlog, got you guys caught up on everything that was going on. And that was on Saturday, the night before the big race. So welcome to the race recap. Um, I'm just gonna pretty much go through step by step, just a real quick video to get you guys up to date and up to speed on what went down from traveling to doing the race and then getting back home. It was definitely a fast pace four days. So let's start with Friday night. Um, so I get back from eating out at the hotel um, and I got like a bug or something. So for 24 hours, I could not eat anything. So I'm trying to like, you know, eat cereal, just eat just like light, light stuff. And I cannot keep it down. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I can't keep it in me. I can't keep it down. And I'm at the point where I almost caught off the race. I'm thinking to myself, you paid you know, travel expenses, you know, fuel, uh, rental car, um, hotel, uh, food. I mean, it was just a lot going on for a race this caliber. And then to say, oh, I'm gonna call it off and then just go back home and it's like a four day vacation. I'm like, uh, I don't think so, but it was really close to calling it off. So Saturday night, uh, I got a, I think like a bowl of cereal, just something real light. I felt fine. Um, got up the next morning, uh, about 4.30. Didn't really feel bad. My stomach was a little like tight from going through, you know, like the situation. Um, but a lot of that could have been, you know, race nerves as I've talked about before. But yeah, I got up. I went downstairs. The manager of the hotel the night before was like, get down here early, there's gonna be a long line. So I'm like, let me get down here early and I can go back and lay back down or get rest, take my time, whatever the case may be. So I went downstairs. There was one other guy, he hadn't even ordered yet. So I'm like, it's a bistro. So I'm like, they gotta have eggs, potatoes, you know, toast, whatever. So I got three eggs, I got toast and bacon. And I sat at one of the little tables just by myself, collected my thoughts for about 30 minutes, consumed the food, I felt fine, didn't feel like I had to go to the bathroom, didn't feel like I was gonna throw up, and I was able to keep it down. So I'm like, okay, this is a good start. This is a good start to a race. So then I'm like, all right, so back to the hotel room. Key wouldn't work, so I had to get someone to let me in the hotel room. So got my, had everything laid out the night before. And I even had my uh, special needs for my run and my bike and my morning clothes bag, which I had my wetsuit in. Cause it was like a wetsuit little thing going around like it was gonna be 76.1. Guess what? It was 76.1. And as soon as they put it on social media at like five o'clock in the morning, they did so. The water felt more like 80. I'll get to the water part in a minute, but it felt more like 80, but uh, back to eating. So I was able to get something to eat. I felt really good. Um, was able to get down to the swim, uh, not swim start, but like the start where the buses took you. So I was like, well, let me go check on my bike. So I went down and checked on my bike. And then I checked on uh, my run bag and my bike bag and everything was there. I felt really good. Um, 
and it was there was one race uh, that I had done. I think it was Chattanooga. I set my actual wetsuit down and walked away. Thank God I knew where my run bag and my bike bag was because if I would not have had my wetsuit, it would have been uh, a bad day because I was not ready to go in the water. And the last race I did, it was extremely cold. So I would have definitely needed a wetsuit. So then I got to the, the race, uh, got on the bus, of course. And then when I got on the bus, there was probably, man, there was probably 20 buses. And we went two and a half miles on this bus down uh, to the swim start. And they had this, I don't know, it was like a, uh, like a metal, like a uh, metal floating dock, if you will. And they had the express line, which kind of went beside that. And it was kind of janky for the price. I think it was like $300 to get all these extra perks. Um, and now that I read a little bit and I'm putting it all together, I'm like, it, it wasn't worth it. But uh, some people wanted to have the perks uh, with the bike and, and getting in the swim first. But uh, I just got up there with the with the 110. Thank God, because I did it. I think uh, 115. I think is what it was. Um, but I'll get the stats in a minute. So jumped in the water. Um, they did three athletes at a time. They had a little buzzer go off, and they had like six spots. They had like th three, 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 and then you jumped, and then when you jumped in the water, you you just started swimming as fast as you can. And a lot of people dove in, a lot of people jumped in feet first. They're like, jump in feet first, it's shallow. So I jumped in feet first. But then I was trying to follow the routine of everybody else. And they're like, go, go, go. And I like went to the next set of people to go in and I was by myself. So I'm like, let me just jump in. So I just jumped in. Cause they're not looking at you jumping in the water you're just actually jumping in the water and they're just hoping that you get out of the way fast enough. Um, but let me back up real quick. So they had a medical table and at the end of the swim, I put shoes down there. They were gone the next day. I had shoes on my feet that I wore to the swim, just some, some old worn out shoes. And then I was like, well, I'm gonna put these on the medical table. They're like, they're not guaranteed to be down there and they weren't. So, Let's talk about the swim. So I jumped in the swim. I'm doing really good. Um, I don't know if it's just from the boats or the kayaks, but for a river, it was a little fast pace. It didn't feel like it was fast, but you did have a little bit of the current helping you. Um, so I was really appreciative to that. And then you pretty much had the island on your right and you had some buoys that you counted and then you had three bridges. So then you knew once you got to the third bridge to start getting over to your left, cause you're gonna get out. And they had like this, uh, these steps going out into the water and you had um, volunteers helping you out of the water. And then when you got out of the water, um, you're waterlogged. So you're like, ah, oh, you're losing your balance. You're like, oh, what do I do? And I'm looking for my shoes. They're not there. So I take off running on the hard concrete and then I step on something and hurt my foot again. It's like every year I hurt my foot on this race between the transition between the swim and the bike leg. So then I'm like, all right, let's just go up here, get this wetsuit off. They had this nice AstroTurf laid out. You laid down, they stripped you down. It was perfect, got the wetsuit off. And then I'm wrapping it up. I'm taking my goggles off. I'm running up this hill. It's like this metal crate. And then um, when I get up this metal gate crate looking scaffolding thing, you get to the top, you go uh, right, uh, find your bike bag, get your bike bag. I changed right there. I got my bike shoes on. I got my helmet on, my gloves on. Um, Seems like I had something else in there. I can't remember what it was. But, uh, oh, sunglasses. Put my sunglasses on, socks, of course. And then I just ran through the transition tent and I got some water when I was in there. And then I ran out, got my bike, went right to my bike, found it very easily, and then ran it to the bike mount line, mounted up, and then headed out to the two loops. Um, it was about 16 miles out. Um, 
and in the first loop it was pretty good I was working on a three hour PR I was working on six hours and then the later in the day it got the more gustier it got so when I got to Chickamauga and I got my special needs bag um, it was about 10 o'clock and then I had a uh, premier uh, protein drink in there I drank that then I had a blondie bar from uh, BPN I got that knocked out and then I think I remember tilting my head back real fast and chugging a Red Bull and then I put the protein in my jersey and uh, I drank that later um, but there was three or four uh, stations with water and uh, uh, water and Gatorade and I just paced myself on that stuff I didn't really drink a whole lot of that because I had my, my own nutrition I had my gels and those were those are pretty good my goose and I feel like that helped and then so we're on the second loop of the bike and the gust is just you're down to like 10 to 13 miles an hour but it ended with a 15 mile an hour average which was pretty great um, so I was very pleased with that and then <clears throat> um, so then you get done you're you're looking for for uh, the little town we were in we got our, the Chattamon Chattamonga or something like that so you're looking for that again looking for that again then you see it and you're like okay you're at like the 90 mile mark you're good and then you come out on the main highway where you first came in now you got to go back to town so then you get back to town it's about 116 miles total um, took me about seven and a half hours and then you jump off your bike there's a bike catcher there and then it's you're you're back in town everybody's kind of hanging out you know you see your family everybody's cheering you on and it's just it's it, it's a great feeling and now you're gonna start the run part of the race and it takes a couple miles to get your your bike legs kind of to transition to the run uh, leg part if you will so um, I can't really think of anything that I left out on the bike I, I feel like it was rolling hills it was super tough um, my training it was amazing I felt like I didn't leave uh, anything on the table I felt really good about the, the whole uh, bike part of the race so transitioning into the run part so I stopped again at my, my run bag took my helmet off changed my socks fresh pair of socks fresh running shoes a hat kept my sunglasses um, on and I had a water bottle there that I put some water in um, and then I had to pee you can't pee on the course so I had to take two minutes, it felt like, took like 10 minutes, but it was only two, to pee, to empty my bladder, because it was full from the whole, uh, you know, all the nutrition that I had got on the bike part, which was great. I didn't feel, like I said, my stomach was a little tight, but other than that, it felt really good. Um, so I would say on the run part, started out pretty good. Um, really pushed myself. You went out about... I'm gonna say six miles they kind of take you out about four to six miles to a Burger King down a main road and then you come back down Riverwalk which Riverwalk is you know where the river's at where you swim um, beautiful beautiful views it did end up getting dark on me because I finished around 930 um, so I'm running everything's fine the first half of the first loop was all flat until you hit this little city by the Chattanooga Golf and Country Club and then it was some I want to call it heartbreak hill because it broke my heart it was horrible hard tough all the above now your quads are pretty much smoked for the most part on the bike um, and then you're kind of okay it's flat for the most part on the run and then you start hitting those hills and then your quads are are trying to recover but they're not recovering it's it's really hard to explain so you push through it's more of a mental at this time your your mind kind of takes over your heart takes over and you push through um, 
So my thought process was walk the aid stations. There's 12, 11 or 12 of them, which is only about 10 seconds. You know, keep refilling your drink, take time, do that, get nutrition down and keep it moving and then start running. And I did that, both loops. So getting into the, uh, the loop in the little town where the Chattanooga Country Club is at, that's where it was the hardest I felt. So I'm like, I need some, I need a cookies or something. So I get to my special needs bag um, for the run part. I pull out a protein drink, it's hot. I try to pour some cold water over it and then I get it down. I don't, my stomach doesn't get upset. Okay, I'm, I'm cool. I don't think I ever ate my second protein bar. Ugh. Excuse me. So I did not, never ate my second protein bar. Um, so I think I give the guy my Red Bull I had. I didn't want to throw that away. So I got the, the protein drink down, put the bar on my jersey, and kept it moving. And then I got around to, uh, I'm gonna say when I got around to the, to, towards the end, I think like mile like 24, there was some volunteers and I seen a box of like Chips Ahoy, Oreos. I'm like, I'm gonna get those. And then I got uh, Chips Ahoy. I got them twice actually on two different aid stations. And I downed the Chips Ahoy. It was like a treat for myself. Give me a little bit of that sugar rush. And I was very pleased with that. Um, I, I needed a, a little something sweet, a little sugar to, to kind of spike the tank, if you will. And then I pushed through. And then you had one more bridge. It was the third bridge you swam under uh, coming back in to town. And then it kind of messes with your mind. So you go right to go your second loop or you go left to finish and it kind of takes you around and you come across the finish line and they say, Keith Brantley, you are an Ironman. And there was a few people coming across the finish line, I remember, and then I had some, some church family there, they were screaming at me. They happened to be in there at a, at a convention. Um, Nathan, uh, Justin, uh, Kimberly, and Krista. They were all there cheering me on. I kept hearing someone saying my name like super loud. I'm like, man, who? there's gotta be another Keith coming across the finish line. And it was the folks from, uh, they happened to be there um, at a convention or something. But it meant a lot. It kind of um, made the, the cheer team that much bigger. And it was a surprise too, to have your, your cheer squad kind of grow like that without even knowing and then you know of course your your family's there they're cheering you on and it was just it was just great two boys were there um, they were cheering me on it was kind of their first Iron Man they kind of understood they were there last year and they kind of understood a little bit but it's like the more they they're around it the more they understand and they and, and they get it so my totals were for September 24th, I hit the water at 7.30 on Sunday morning and finish time was 14 hours, 38 minutes, uh, 117th place out of 138, 45 to 49. 743 place at a 947, 958 place out of 1266. So they had planned to have a lot more folks in this Ironman, and it was an average pace of 1310. So finish time of 1438. It's like 14 hours this thing took me. I don't know why I thought it took me 13 hours, but probably 14 if you take out the transition times. And the start of the swim was a little slow. So. 14 hours and 38 minutes. So that'll finish up this uh, vlog for my triathlon prep. I did sign up for another race, Ironman Hain City. So I'm gonna get this one uploaded and get this out to you folks. And then we're gonna go through that one step by step. 
you're gonna love it. I will see you at the start line of your next Iron Man, and I hope all these details help you a lot. Remember, the first thing you do when someone tells you about an Iron Man and you're gonna commit to it, sign up. Because once you commit, you sign up, you're gonna do it. Anything's possible.